air, water, earth, fire. For hundreds of years, the four nations have lived in harmony. The Avatar, master of all four elements, was always responsible for maintaining the peace. But Avatar Roku passed away 13 years ago. Now, the four nations look to the air nomads to reveal the next Avatar, but the world is met with silence. Rumors from the Earth Kingdom abound that the Fire Nation is planning an aggressive move into the Earth Kingdom. Five young heroes were too late to save the Southern Air Temple, but they hold vital information that could save the Earth Kingdom and maybe even save the world. Previously on the Flying Bison Podcast. Zyton is revealed to be part of the White Lotus. As the crew comes to grips with what this means for them, their leader, Pangole, asks them to hunt down and bring Ivan to justice. Will they join the White Lotus? Find out this week! Welcome to another episode of the Flying Bison Podcast. We are going to find out what the White Lotus have in store for you, but first I have a very important question. Does anyone here have any train-related stories they would like to tell? Like Amtrak kind of train? Like or like band? a train of thought? <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm oh, yeah, poking Johnny, because I know Johnny's got a great, a great train story. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. we, we promised, <laughs> we promised episodes ago to tell it eventually. And I yeah. think, I think today's the day. Yeah, I don't. Honestly, I don't remember how I found it now, but there was one day I was on YouTube. I was watching videos, falling down a a video hole as one does. And I came across this show that was just, it felt like the most bonkers thing I'd ever seen in my life. And I wasn't sure if it was a parody or if it was real, like what was going on. But it was this show called uh, Great Train Kids. And I texted the group about it and found out. That, well, uh, hang on. Tell, okay. tell us a little bit about the show first. It just, there was this, it was like this, these like moral lessons with this like train conductor guy. And it just, it f- <laughs> honestly it felt really creepy. <laughs> most, of the, <laughs> most of the things he was yeah. saying were like, should he be near these kids? I don't, I don't know if this is okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it was just, I don't even remember a lot of the moments. It was just, I remember feel, what I felt watching it, but it's been a while <laughs> since I watched the episode I could find. So Johnny texted our group and he's like, I I watched this sh- and I feel like this is the group that would be able to tell me anything about this show. And I texted back and said, Johnny, you have no idea how fortuitous this is. This is literally the group to find out about the show. My wife and Danny Wickman were on that show. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Also to clarify, the reason I thought the group might know something was because it said it was like filmed in Milwaukee or something like that. Like on the. Oh, okay. I didn't know that that's. Yeah. And so I knew that like Nick. But that's still like, what a weird like coincidence. Like. Yeah. That you're like, I'm like literally Johnny. I can tell you so much about this show right now. Wow. You have no idea. We are so, in the presence of a great train kid right now. If we are. Well, no, Danny wasn't a great train kid. I technically kid. wasn't a great train kid. I was what the, were you? I was the friend of a great train kid's brother. Yeah, there's a, a flashback, like the I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's, in that episode, there's a flashback where some kid's not invited to birthday party i think no no yeah so <laughs> what is so yeah i played danny i they gave my character the same first name as me so it was easy you know must have been hard for you to get into that role yeah i was i mean i did um i was sitting in front of a mirror just channeling my inner daniel day lewis you know um and yeah like my character wasn't invited to like a birthday party or something and the great train kid was like so so we all had danny over and <laughs> just a, there's like a quick cut to us like sitting around a coffee table drinking water <laughs> just laughing as one does <laughs> when they hang out with danny and have him over it it is a crazy show you have to look it up it's it's this guy who wanted to make a tv show that had good morals because he thought there wasn't enough like good teachings in television and 
I oh man, I gotta I gotta agree with Johnny. He probably should not be anywhere near <laughs> children Kids. No, um, yeah. trying to teach them anything. Uh, he did popularize the phrase uh, "Make America Great" years before Donald Trump, though. Uh, if you watch the episode on YouTube, he says it multiple times. Oh my god! And uh, wow, it's it's <laughs> wild. There's an episode where like one of the Great Train Kids uh, it, like is doing drugs. And so to like get him to not do drugs, they sing a song and Abby kicks a bag of powdered sugar away from a massive bag, a massive, a massive bag, bag of powdered, powdered, powdered sugar. sugar, powdered sugar. Like this man right. must have been a narco or something. There's so many great stories. So in the show too, <laughs> this is how Abby always told me. She's like, this guy who created the show is like, what are the two things that kids love? trains and dogs <laughs> <laughs> and so the great train kids those are in born. my like top 1000 <laughs> and the conductor has a pet dog whose name is blue the real dog's name is blue but they can't say blue on tv because that's copyrighted, copyrighted. <laughs> so they they had to call the dog naboo i think like the something Star that, Wars plan? Yeah. Something that sounds enough like something the Something that sounded that like respond. Blue that the dog responded to that <laughs> was not its I real I wonder name. if they just called him Blue, like the color. Maybe. They could have done that. So look it up. Great Train Kids, Jim Lee's. Yeah, Jim Lee's I don't wanna, Great Train Kids. Jim Lee's. Normally, I wouldn't say someone's first name and last name on this podcast, but it's, I think, the only way to make sure you're looking at the right mm-hmm, video. Yeah. you got to watch it. It is... It's a trip. Yeah. It's Unfortunately, there's trip. only one episode available online. I have been trying for years, Johnny, years <laughs> to get the end. It only had one season. Shocker. I know it only had one season. <laughs> I was going to say, if you post on r slash like lost media, it'll just, it, it'll pop up instantaneously. They will find I bet it you, I bet you I can oh, find yeah. it. I've also, I mean, my, my mother-in-law's has still kind of talks to this person. Like they know they knew each other beforehand. That's how I like Abby got this gig. So I've been begging her. I'm like, mom, please. Like what, what do please. I need to give you to get this man's contact information from you? Like, please send me his <laughs> number. I will pay anything for the entire season of the great train games. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, hasn't happened yet. Well, I actually used to watch that show. Did you I really? I did, what? I texted that in the group. Yeah, that I used to watch. That's that show. right. That is insane. Yeah. That is so insane. That was, How did you find super- that? How did you find? I thought it was only local. No, it was not. Uh, I think I, you know what? I was really young at that time, so I don't know how I was able to find it. But my mom had it on VHS. So there is oh, a VHS out how. there somewhere, yeah. And mm. if I find it, I will send it to you. Great trip, absolutely. It's the entire amazing. season. Oh my god! What a it's, confluence effect in yeah. so the universe. <laughs> now each of us so are going to find our own direct link to this show, <laughs> The Great Train Kids. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that's my great train stories that I I used to watch this show, you and I didn't realize sh- that I was at some point I saw Danny, and I would be working with him. Yeah, there you, the there you go. There you go. Funny. There you go. So that funny. smug child drinking water. Yeah. <laughs> we should have never had him over. <laughs> never. Should have not gone to that party. Well, um, man, trains are great, right? Trains and dogs. <laughs> trains. Love them. Trains and dogs. Look trains, all trains dogs, and dogs in America. <laughs> trains <laughs> and powdered sugar. The three things. <laughs> The three things. Well, uh, you know, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll put a link to the YouTube video uh, in the description for this episode, so people can just go straight there. <laughs> oh, no. You Abby really gotta watch it, you, Justin. Abby's she might. I have been. It's here's the thing, though. It's one of those things that could, like, if enough people watch, could definitely go viral. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's got mm. that energy where you're like, what am i watching right now <laughs> make great train kids go viral guys make hashtag make great train kids go viral no <laughs> danny I, do you have an imdb credit with that on there <laughs> no oh, we should add it i think they paid me like 20 bucks hey it still they paid you though. for imdb yeah. yeah it's like one of those like horror stories from like an like a 
extra in like a Hallmark show where like didn't get paid anything and the director sucked. Mm-hmm. Like one of those, man. They made me drink water. Ugh. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Is that where your your fear of drinking water came from? Yeah, it's the <laughs> audacity. It can only be carbonated now. Well, you know where else has trains? Bossing say. <laughs> Bossing say has trains. Way to transition. <laughs> what a great segue. That's a great segue. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, you are not uh, near any trains in Bossing say though, because you are in the agrarian zone in a mountain. And there aren't trains in the White Lotus headquarters. Yay. 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 We made it finally. You made it finally. You met some more. And uh, they seem at least a little bit more competent and with it than I think the other White Lotus agents that you have met. Connie really hadn't had contact with them in a while. And Iron turned out to be a sleeper cell agent and a, a terrible person. <laughs> but uh you met uh you met three you met three white lotus agents you met princess zaison you met Ryoshan, an airbender and pangole who is the grand master here in ba Sing Se. and it turns out that they want to hire you in order to join the white lotus help them track down iron and bring him to justice and, you know, obviously there's some hesitancy just based on your past with the White Lotus and just some of your uh, feelings about authority and shadow work. And, uh, yeah, but eventually you, you're you kind of at least willing to hear Pango lay out, hear the White Lotus agents out. Uh, he shows Liko and Ren a statue of... Liko's parents, Sutek and Konedi, in the Hall of Histories, where a number of White Lotus agent heroes uh, are memorialized and commemorated. It was Rosic who went to go look for Princess Sison. Yes. Osa just went to be alone. Osa just went to be alone. Yeah, and Che just went to ruin that. So and Che went. Che went to ruin that. Yes. I think we'll pick it up with. Uh, Osa, what are you doing as you're just trying, as, as you're alone? What what are you doing? I think Osa would have gone uh, down the tunnel until he found a spot that looked good to just sit. And so that's what he's doing. He's just sitting and thinking and yeah, kind of quietly mourning the fact that everyone from the Southern Air Temple is probably definitely dead. Yeah. Can I ask how he's sitting? Uh, on the floor with his like hands on his or his like arms resting on his knees, his hands out in front of him and his head just just down. So he'll like feel himself rise up a bit. And then like a chair will like just raise up out of the ground around him. <laughs> and chair will walk into the screen. So um heard what she said about um what she learned from what happened with uh, she. Yeah. I'm a little confused. You did the right thing to she. You did the wrong thing to yourself and to us. But she needed to go down. That needed to happen. I think that um, if I hadn't been so focused on making sure that had happened, I I wouldn't have done the wrong thing to myself or to all of you. That's fair. He'll bend up uh, like another chair, like across from you and sit down. I just, I don't want you to think that I know it doesn't necessarily go with your your airbender t- teachings. I'm not... I don't pretend to know what those are even. But it it just had to happen. And yeah, you have you went overboard with it. And that's what you should take from it. And I just want to make sure that it's not... Because I don't think we can go light on, 
on Iron. I don't think I don't think we're bringing him back if I'm being honest. I I understand. I just I guess what I meant is that I've learned that I I've learned two things, really. One that sometimes it's possible to get so singularly focused on what you perceive as justice that you do injustice in the process and that death is not always justice and, and justice is not always death. Yeah. I hang my head and yeah, that's, it reminds me of, um, I just, uh, there's a lot that I don't want to repeat, not of my own actions, but of, uh, of what my father did. I don't think anyone, even Rosic, really understands, but he, it's not, I'm not afraid of becoming him because I spent time with him or because I was close to him or because he trained me. I'm afraid of becoming him because he doesn't make any sense to me because I didn't know him. So you're afraid you'll make the same mistakes without knowing it? I'm not afraid of anything. Okay. He smiles at Osa. <laughs> Osa smiles back and says, I I didn't know your father. I, I wasn't there when everything happened. But I know you. I, I don't think that's going to happen, Che. It's nice to hear. For what it's worth, I think... Well... I'm just really glad that you're back. Me too. And you said before that that we weren't okay. And I just, whatever it takes to get us there, I'll do it. I think you've done it. I'll get up and I'll bend the chair back into the ground that I was sitting on. And I'll leave you to your thoughts. Sorry to interrupt. Thanks, Chad. No problem. Walk away. Meanwhile, Rosic, you are looking for Princess Saison, and you go back to where you left her, and you can see that she is actually in like a. She is actually in a uh, fighting ring, and she's facing off against Ryoshan. And the most interesting thing is that you know that they're both benders. You know Ryoshan is a airbender. You know that someone like Zaisan definitely is a firebender, uh, being royal. And there, no one is bending. It's all martial combat. And as you're watching it for a moment, you can see even some similar forms that Ren has started to pick up. And you watch for a little bit longer, and you see Zaisan strike Ryoshin's right arm, and you can see the right arm kind of like fall to the side. Hmm. And Ryoshin quickly like recovers from that, and it looks like she's opened herself up to get hit again. And Zaisan just goes back and just goes for this large Superman punch to try and knock Ryoshin out. And Ryoshin just slides under Zaison, pops back up behind her, quickly strikes all of her limbs with her left arm and her feet, and Zaison just falls down like a potato sack onto the ground. Ryoshin just starts <laughs> clapping from where he's standing. Wow! That was crazy! Good <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> that was amazing. I'm sorry. Uh, and Ryoshan like hits Zaisan's limbs again, and Zaisan. <sighs> <laughs> oh yes. Uh, well, I will get you one day, I suppose. You're gonna try. It's probably not gonna happen though. So, I mean, I guess keep practicing. I will. I will. Um, you're a firebender, yes. Oh, me? Uh, yes, yes, I'm talking to you. Yeah, I guess he could say so. And then Rose, like, snaps his fingers and a little, a little like, flicker of a flame appears on his thumb. Uh, that's a cute party trick. Um, <laughs> are you any good in a fight? Your friends are going to need help. 
on their journeys? Um, I'd say so. Yeah. Um, I can fire. I can fire a band. Mm, you seemed rather hesitant there. That's. I mean, so I was taught by my mother, who's an earthbender, and also, um, growing up, I was taught by my friend Dosa, but he was really just like a peer, you know? It wasn't really any teaching, more so just sparring, and I don't think he was really much in a teaching mindset, you know? He had a lot of um, unresolved issues and walls that sort of never came down. Well, it's not the failure of the teacher to teach, to not teach in combat. It's the failure of the student not to learn. You just saw that, that fight, right? Mm Mm-hmm. What should have happened? What do you mean by that? Why did I lose? I don't know, because you weren't reading her correctly? Good, keep going. What else? Oh, you weren't fast enough? I don't know. Getting there. I have distanced myself from the Fire Nation. I don't believe in anything my brother is doing. I've learned from the airbenders to move gracefully, to move like the wind. And I was far too aggressive in that moment, and I allowed my aggression, my passion to overtake me. It is those moments that I am no longer a learner. I I tap into something I want nothing to do with at all. Hmm. I wish I spend my days meditating and fighting against it it just eats at me um at this point rosak has his um mother's hairpin out and as she's been like saying this rosak just sort of been like fiddling with it like with both his hands and listening to her um as she said that um yeah i i feel like i can really resonate (laughs) with that as well um Wait, so can you firebend? Sly smile goes across her face and she starts this flurry of fire and like acrobatic jumping and leaping. And she lands with her hands up. Well, what do you think? Can I firebend or no? I really... That was really cool to see. And I... Just hearing like your story and why you chose the path you did. It intrigues me, like very much so. Um, do you think if we ever found the time, you would be able to teach me some of what you know? Why don't you plead? Please, please teach me! Okay, I'm gonna roll. I rolled a seven. You rolled a seven. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good old Justin's thinking about something juicy laugh. <laughs> it is. It is. I, I did realize that that uh, I, I do do that. Um, <laughs> I have something maybe you'd find interesting. Um, but to really learn it, uh, we have to... I think it would be helpful to learn it from a scroll. I dropped a very important scroll some time ago. Um... I don't quite know what happened to it. I dropped it. I was on Nojai Island, and... Well, um... Yes, if you were to find that, um, perhaps I could show you something. Um, (laughs) princess, could this... Please, you can just (laughs) just call me Zaisan, please. Zaisan, could this... And, um, with a flurry, he throws, like, pockets the hairpin... And with a flourish of his hands, Rose like, like makes a poof of fire and holds out his hand. Could this be the scroll you're talking about? There's nothing is... in his hand. There's nothing in his hand. And you hear a clatter, and the scroll is just like on the ground, rolling away from him. He goes, oh, shoot. 
Um, he runs over and picks it up. Could this be the scroll <laughs> you're talking about? Uh, and she, and I see it. Yeah, he, he hands it to her. She unfurls and she's like, well, uh, this is half the scroll I was talking about. Ah, uh, yeah. You don't have the other half? Do you perhaps? No, I do not. That's why I said I dropped the scroll. Oh, yeah. So if you were to find the other half, I could could teach you something. But you can't. But you can't help me until I, we find the other half. I can show you, but uh, really, the scroll kind of brings everything together. I'm I'm not a very very good teacher. I'm just mm. all right at it. Um, I think the scroll would really really help. Hmm. All right. Well, deal. And Rose like holds out his hand. Mm. For a handshake. Deal it is. Alright. Oh, well. Until then, anytime you'd like to spar, just let me know. I'm happy to fight. You'll use firebending? Absolutely. Cool. I'll even take you down without firebending. Oh. <laughs> cool, cool. Alright, well. Nice chat. Yes. And Rose like, just whips the scroll out of her hand, pockets it, and frolics away. Uh, and I'm assuming, uh, well, you tell me, Liko and Ren, uh, I'm assuming eventually you leave the Hall of History as you don't stay there forever and ever. Incorrect. Okay, wonderful. Well, then, uh, we'll just <laughs> never see Liko and Ren again, and it'll be the, the three of you. I think Ren would wait to see when Liko kind of takes the lead out of there. Um, but Ren would have been reading various scrolls, books, inscriptions, hoping to piece together anything of relevance to his own story. Do I find anything, Justin? Yeah, you know what? Why don't you rely on your skills and training for now? Okay. Yeah, I think I'm relatively well acquainted with mm -hmm. reliquaries and libraries and such. Yeah. Yeah, you've established that. Full hit. 11. Okay. 11. You want something more than the fact that the song history just sort of appears out of nowhere. Yes? Yes. Ren, you are reading through the histories, and it's not, like, explicitly connected to your family, right? Uh. But as you're reading, you realize that if there was any pirate activity happening a hundred percent. They went through Wolf Cove, which used to be the Southern water tribes capital. Mm. It was a, a den of delinquents and miscreants. So if anyone knows anything about the song dynasty, then it would probably be someone in Wolf Cove. Okay. How about them apples? I like these apples. As I'm scanning through, does it, so it seems like some kind of, when you say like pirate stuff must have happened here, this was a former capital. It came to ruin at some point? It's not destroyed. You know that Avatar Kyoshi's era and all throughout Avatar Roku's era, uh, Wolf Cove has plummeted economically to the point of it being completely irrelevant uh so even at the height of it it was a a, a center point of piracy and pirates and to some extent that has kind of increased um and it has become an even darker place to live than it even used to be whereas before like there was still money flowing through so there were still decent people now it's basically just bandits basically just pirates but no one's really doing anything about it mm -hmm. yeah so ren's piecing this picture together in his head initially he was waiting clearly like looking up every so often for liko to see if liko was done by the statues of her parents but Eventually, Ren is just immersed, just pouring over these texts. Um, I've been looking at all these scrolls and trying to find more about my family history. Uh, Justin, did I find anything? Let's do 
assess the situation for Liko. Does that make sense? So I got a five. Maybe that doesn't make sense. I think it makes sense. You just grew up in a swamp. Yeah. I've been around books my whole life. <laughs> swamp girl. Uh, all right. Um, all classist. All right. Let's 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 tone it down. Pull back there. Okay. Ren is not saying that. Steve is the classist in this room. <laughs> With a five, Liko, you are reading through stories about your parents, and you realize that when they joined the White Lotus, uh, there was a small group of them that sort of became a a unit your parents kanu and iron and you discover that as you're reading through this it sort of has like a so-and-so the son of so-and-so like the histories of families that have been in the white lotus Uh, iron is actually pangole's son so when I find this out, I immediately look for Peng- Pengole. Ren, you just see Liko leave. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Ren ditches the scrolls. Does not put them back properly. Um, so I, I leave, and would it be all right if, as I'm, as I leave to look for Pengole, if I bump into the rest of the group? Yeah, you bump into Che and uh, Rosic for sure. I don't know if Osa's still still meditating or if eventually he. He leaves. So you you see them all. Yep. You're kind of in that main hallway area and you see the rest of them. Oh, thank heavens. I was lost. I <laughs> I was trying to I've been trying to find you guys for a while. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. these tunnels are weird. Did you guys find out anything fun and exciting about your family lineage? Uh, yeah. Um you know where Pangoli is? I don't know where anything is, if I'm being <laughs> honest. <laughs> okay. So I just look around and I just start to walk in the direction that they came from. We just follow Liko's yep. lead. Yep, we just follow. We just follow her. Uh, and uh, eventually, you like get to this hallway that appears to have like a bunch of. Uh, it's it's almost like a mess hall for the White Lotus members who who stay here. And uh, behind the counter is Pangole, and he's like serving out dumplings. For all the White Lotus agents. Oh no. <laughs> Alright, there you go. There's one for you. One for you. Oh, so you. I just immediately walk up to him and uh, slam my hands on the table. And I say, when were you going to tell us that Ivan was your son? Oh, what? Uh, <laughs> what? Tell you right now. He's my son. <laughs> He's always one step ahead of us. <laughs> oh, I was definitely behind. Yeah, I know. Uh, so... You didn't think that was important? It is not important. When you join the White Lotus, some sense of you, you give up. Your family. So No. He is biologically my son, but his actions and his just general evil demeanor has forced me to distance myself from him. So he is also not my son. Okay. Your son or not, you know what he did to me, my family, to us. You did not think that was important to at least mention that perhaps... You may at least know the guy. And what if it had been anyone else? But it's not. Hang hang on, hang on, hang on. We don't hold Che and Rozak responsible for who their father was. No, but they were very honest from the very beginning. But it's it's irrelevant. It's not Pangole's fault that his son has done the things he he did. And Pangole's trying to rectify the situation. I'm just it's saying kind of the other direction though, right? Like it kind of is his fault. He's he's the father. So it's your father's fault that you chose the side of good over Project Spark? No, he's part of the White Lotus. We all his make our own to... choices. I'm not blaming him for the actions that his son made. Then why are you I'm blaming him for not being honest with us about who he knows his son has affected? It's irrelevant. 
And also, it wasn't part of the fiction the last time we met. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what that means. What, what fiction? Me neither. Me neither. I, just, I felt like saying that. <laughs> it's really, he's just trying to throw us off. All right. Here's the thing, Alyssa. My father tried to make me into a perfect soldier, right? And if I had become that, that would have been his fault, at least partially. But I chose to do something else. Yes. And and that's my success, not his failure. And I think that the inverse and, can be true, too. That Pingole could have raised Iron to be a dutiful uh, servant of the good. And Iron made his own choices. That's... I'm not upset with him for Iron's choices. I'm upset with him for not telling me about my family's history in connection to Iron. I understand. He means nothing to me. And, and you can tell that like that's that is still hard for him to say. You would send us to hurt your own son? I would send you to bring justice to someone who has betrayed the White Lotus, who has betrayed peace and prosperity amongst the land. That's what's important. It doesn't matter who did it. If one of you were to turn, one of you were to commit, and he looks at Osa, genocide, or invade a country, the White Lotus would bring you to justice. It doesn't matter who it is. It only matters what they have chosen to do. So, just to be clear, you're, you're working on the Fire Lord, right? You're getting there? Working up to that? Yes, the Fire Lord is trickier. He commands a great army and... Very... Well, I'm sure Zyson can tell you all about the rampant nationalism in the Fire Nation. I'm sure you yourself can attest to it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what you're talking about. It's just the greatest country in the world. I would encourage you to talk to Zaisan. So wait a second. I mean, you said that you thought that I would be interested because of my history with Iron. Are you sure there's nothing else in connection to this now that I know that he's your son? People often assume that revenge is a bad thing doesn't have to be there are ways to to take revenge that fall in line with justice especially if there's personal history involved so i would be lying if i said i did not want to give you and myself a chance for revenge okay is there anything you can tell us about him regarding any weaknesses always had a fascination with the theater so you want to sit is there anything else like does he have weak ankles <laughs> something like a bad ah, eye yes. his mom did dip him in a river except for his oh ankle uh, <laughs> so it's like and, an achilles that, uh, yes. that kind of Who's situation that? I think it's in scrolls his mom dipped him in a river that's kind of messed up Yes, it was. I told her not to do it. It's probably why he's evil. Yeah, I, I think with this newfound knowledge, we might be able to use that. Yeah. Does does he like you? <laughs> oh God, no! <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> what made you think that we got along? <laughs> I'm not sure. Some people have very fond memories of their fathers. Some people don't. <laughs> I mean, I want to be clear. Fond memories of their fathers? It's not me. Some people do. Oh. You know, once you choose evil, things kind of get colored by that by that lens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Ren says, sometimes, even if you have mostly bad memories of someone, it doesn't erase the few good ones you do hang on to. It was a good question, Liko. Now, it doesn't have to be right now, but do you think you can tell us the story about how Iron fell? I think every bit of this, of his history, would help us 
in helping you gain your good revenge, as you say. I promise that the Game Master will come up with an interesting story to tell. Okay, perfect. Again, I, I don't know what that means. I'm just I'm just saying words at this point. Mm-hmm. Fiction, Game Master. I think this guy's a little insane, guys. Pangoli just somehow breaks the fourth wall whenever <laughs> his brain meanders. <laughs> <laughs> he says completely accurate things. I'm just going to assume that someday you will tell us. Yes, no, uh... Of course. Um, this has brought up some old memories, um, so not not right now. But yes, I will. I will share it with you. Can I have a moment with my friends? Well, I mean, I know I can. I'm not. I shouldn't be asking you this. I'm. I'm telling you, so I'm not rude to you. Yeah. I'm just talking. Yeah. She's trying to politely tell you to leave. Wait, we're in the cafe. Dear, yeah. yeah, we came to No, head. no, no. We can see because you're, aren't you like serving people? I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> no, serving. No, if we're, you want to say, leave. Yeah, get out if, of here. No, if you'd like to take a dumpling, I've got a bunch of people to serve. <laughs> everybody leave. Everybody out. Everybody out. Everybody out. This is our room now. Um, man, that's not quite how this works. Um, you can take a dumpling and go. Is, is there a room where we could speak privately? Oh, there's there's dozens of rooms you can. <laughs> okay, let me Absolutely. ask more specifically. Can you tell us where to find a room we can speak privately? <laughs> yeah, literally. If you start walking any direction, you'll find an empty room. <laughs> I somehow do not believe that, but you know what? Okay. Well, well we can manage. Unbelievable. I take a dumpling and go. <laughs> I'm really worried we're not going to get enough information to do our task. I take three more dumplings. If you want to eat those, Shay, from what we've heard, his dumplings aren't the best. Rosalik says under his breath, so Pangola doesn't hear. I didn't, yeah, I think his beard is still out, too, so. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have a beard net. He does not have a beard net, no. I think I might have Maybe. seen his beard dip into the pork a little bit. It 100% does, yeah. Not, not appetizing. I was never going to eat any of these dumplings, guys. And I just throw them on the ground. I just took them as a sign. I just took them because I could. No, it's payback. Ren's like, oh, uh, oh. And like, clearly is halfway through a dumpling and then spits it out. Uh, Ren, it's the best dumpling you've ever had. That changes everything. <laughs> <laughs> the salt from his beard. That changes. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. It doesn't matter when what? the salt comes. Oh, no. <laughs> it matters what the salt is. All right. Do we it find organic? Do we find a room? <laughs> yes. You literally walk in any direction and find a number of empty rooms. Well, what would you know? He was actually telling the truth. There's like a hallway labeled any direction. Any direction. <laughs> like, that's what he was talking about. Rooms. <laughs> All right, guys. The naming schemes here. I don't know about them. All right, guys. How do we feel about this now? Yeah, I don't think it changes anything. I wanted to go after Iron anyway, so all of this is just... Just checking. Okay, so we're going to go after him. Um, anybody know how? Anybody know when? Well... Why was that spirit after us again? I don't, I don't really know. So maybe we get some more of those like spirit bombs or whatever, whatever that was that is from Hawashu. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, if we could get some of those, that'd be great. Um, <clears throat> is it possible that really Iron is sending those spirits? From what we know of Iron, why would he send them after Osa? Well, the the spirit that. I think I know the people that are sending the spirits or the person and the dark spirit that sent the other spirit. And it would make sense for them to be working with Iron. There's, there's a dark spirit and a person. Yeah. There was another person who's there when I took my airbending test and the whole, the whole thing I told you guys about when I freed Hawashu, I freed Hawashu from the dark spirit and the other airbender. Oh. oh, an evil airbender. That's news. Yeah. Lucky for us, he's not 
the brightest. <laughs> but if he's working with Iron, we're still in trouble. Is there, you know, obviously we've been deceived so many times. Do you think there's a possibility that even though Bangole says he's seeking good revenge, that he could just be in league with his son as well? Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. I don't really believe there's any such thing as good revenge, but. Neither do I. I feel like also- this is just called justice. Yeah. I think we should go after justice here. I think it's the right thing to go after Iron. Well, that's why I brought it up that it's there's a possibility that he could be in league with him, calling revenge something good. As speaking as someone who recently got to try to get revenge, I can tell you, I don't think there is any such thing as good revenge. Yeah, revenge is revenge is what caused me to do what I did. That's why I died. So. I think if we go after Iron, we all need to make sure that revenge isn't what we're after. I agree. Well, but like a, a little bit is all right. There's, there's like scales. It's like relative. You know? I don't think that's how it works, Che. But. You know, I'm learning. Yeah. I'm trying. I mean. I'll get there. I'm sure. Yeah. Just as long as we know that there's a possibility that we could be going into a trap since, you know, last time we've done this, we've walked into how many? Yeah. All regarding Iron. Everything we walk into is a trap. Mm-hmm. I, personally, I don't, I don't think Pangole is a bad man. I think he might be misguided. And I don't. Misguided how? Like the revenge talk. I think that he might be blinded by his anger and disappointment with his son but I don't think that he's working with him so Osa what do you feel comfortable doing I mean I'm in it with you guys I want to get Iron I don't think the world is safe if he's out there but if, if you all say no then I say no I agree with you. I think we need to go after Iron. I think we just need to be very careful so we don't make the same mistakes we've been making. All right, so let's just assume that he knows exactly what we can do, exactly where we are, and exactly what resources we have when we go after him. Because he probably does, and he always has. So, yeah. We should just do that. We should just start planning for that. Yeah. All right, so I guess we'll just tell Pangole that we'll help him, and we'll make the plan as we... As we go along. Let's tell him that we'll get Iron. I know it's splitting hairs, but so, that's what I do. So you don't want to join the White Lotus. You just want to get Iron. I don't like that idea. The White Lotus thing. How do you guys feel about that? I just... I personally don't want to be a part of the White Lotus. It did not serve my family well. That's a good point. Also, just not great on secret organizations right now. <laughs> kind of 0 for 1 mm-hmm. on that whole... Th- Actually, 0 for 2. Mm. Ren? Honestly, I feel like it would just give us more problems and obligations. And I don't want anything that could take us all apart. But if we're just oh, us, then, happen, then we can do what we want. Mm. What was it? I, I agree with Bren. I, I like having the freedom that we have as the group that we're in. And I don't like the idea of being confined to a set of rules that the Lotus might lay out. Just to be clear, if any one of you guys did want to join the White Lotus, it doesn't mean the rest of us do. So if that's something that you do want to do, that's okay too. I just don't want you guys to think that it has to be one way or no way at all. I'm just asking about how everyone feels about our current plan. But nobody better join, also. <laughs> oh. I was trying to be diplomatic, Ren, so just... I'm... Yeah, that's that's good, too. <laughs> you did great. Um, well, also, yeah, what did you want to do? I, I was thinking I would join. Okay. But, but why? Well, it 
It's just... Ever since I left the Air Temple, I've been... Looking for that again. A place where I could feel like, I don't know, I was part of something bigger than myself. But, uh, but I also have the, the four of you and, and Toko and Kasa and uh, I don't need the White Lotus. If, if you're not joining, I won't join. Also, if you Ren's, wanted- Ren's eyes get a little misty, <clears throat> but he just kind of furrows his brow, doesn't say anything. Osa, if you do want to join, that'd be okay. And we're your friends. Ultimately, we stand beside you. I mean, obviously, we wouldn't do the White Lotus thing, but... Yeah, we'll support you. Thanks. Um, I, I know that. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll see how this goes. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll join later. All right. Let's go see Pengole. So Liko walks out to find him again. Hey, Ren, can I, can I talk to you for a sec before we follow everybody else? Sure. Um, I'm assuming do, do uh, Che and Rozak follow Liko out? Yeah, I can shake. No, we're just standing there. We're just staring at him. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. All right. And I'll just grab yeah. De- <laughs> grab Rosic and just yeah. drag him out. Let's go. Um, I just, I had something I wanted to, to give you. Uh, when, when I was in the, in the spirit world, I, I was able to find this. And, um, I mean, you're, you're, you're not a Kyoshi warrior anymore, so I don't know if, if you even want it, but um, and, and Osa reaches into his pocket and pulls out uh, the metal war fan that Ren left in the cabin with all the <sighs> little co-spirits. Ren holds the fan staring at his own reflection in the blades as it spreads out. H- how? I thought it might still be there when I was in the spirit world and I mean, I don't know, just I, I had the thought that I might be able to find it. And I missed all of you so much and I wanted I wanted a, a piece of of you. And so I went and I, I found it. And I don't really know how it came back with me, but it did. But it's yours. So I want you to have it. Thank you. Oh, um, I was supposed to ask. And Ren gestures to the necklace he's wearing, which was yours. Did you want this back? Uh, Osa just smiles and says, uh, you keep it. It looks better on you. Okay. All right. Uh, we should, we should catch up to the others. Right. Yeah. Okay. Osa and Ren, you catch up to the other three. And by now in the mess hall, Everyone's sort of gone away. Lunch rushes over. Uh, you just see Pangola. He's like cleaning the kitchen. His back is turned to you right now. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, oh, hi. Hi. So we've decided to help you catch Iron. Wonderful. W- wonderful. Uh, that's great. Thank you. You're welcome. But. As I said, there's a butt. Okay, all right. I'm gonna need you to tell us what happened before. It doesn't have to be right now because I understand this is probably something really sensitive. But before we leave, I would like it if you would tell us what happened. I promise, I will tell you. Um, we're also gonna need ample supplies and the funds to to resupply, mm-hmm. maybe multiple times. Took the words right out of my mouth, Osa. Yes. Um, where were you on uh, joining the White Lotus? Pending. We're going to catch Iron first, and then we'll tell you what happens afterwards regarding our status. All right. Well, and yes. Regarding the supplies, 
I have my dragon, but we're going to need a second one. A second dragon? Or, or a mode of transportation. Uh, it might be kind of hard. Um, why don't you uh, plead with Pangole? Okay. No, oh, come on, man. Oh, I got a nine. You got a nine. So on a seven to nine, they need something more evidence that this is the right course, guidance in making the right choice, or resources to aid them. I want to be clear. This animal, whatever what happens, will not have any like mechanical benefit like Rue has for your group. Other than the fact that it will get you from point A to point B. Can I make a request? Uh, absolutely. Now I know about the mountain of Natachi. And I know that's where dragons are born. What would happen if you helped us get there? There's a specific dragon we're looking for. One we've been in contact with before. Can you help us get in contact with him? I could provide you the supplies to get to Notachi Island. It's deep in the Fire Nation, though. Um, then we'd need a little bit of extra resources. Of course. Resources and supplies I could get you. Dragon, do you, dragons are their own creature. They're sentient. They speak. I, I understand. I couldn't convince him to help you. You would have to convince it to help you. I'm not asking you to convince him. I'm asking Just you to take us there. To get you there. Safely, of course. And then what happens after that would be our responsibility. Well... In all fairness. Um, I could obviously supply... The White Lotus could give you the resources and the money to get there. It would be very dangerous going into the Fire Nation. I don't know what you've heard, but... Um, well, the Fire Nation is... Uh, basically closed off to uh, outsiders now there's not a lot that can get in and out I mean you can you can certainly try I have heard stories of blockades of fire nation ships patrolling the waters have to be careful to get out of their way but um, I could at least provide you with the the funds to get there perfect that seems fair mm, take it the uh, other option is um, I think one of our agents took a leopard eagle on a mission to Omashu. Could requisition that. It's a little quicker, a little closer. Okay. But if you're intent on finding this dragon... I think our dragon friend can wait until we've gotten Iron. You sure about that? Yeah, I mean, he's a dragon. What's going to happen to him? He could be captured for one and then sold and tortured and skinned alive legal it's very specific that is what's happening um, well they're being hunted a little <laughs> but I mean how many firebrands can actually take on a dragon I'm just saying that as someone who has a connection with a dragon I know how rare that is so if you're okay with not pursuing your dragon that's fine but either way, we're going to need a second transportation just in case. Yeah, I think the work to get a dragon for me is uh, its going to be a little... <clears throat> I don't even know if I have a dragon. So we'll, we'll just take the, uh, the, the legal or whatever. The, the leopard seagull? And yeah. How fast is this thing? A leopard eagle? Very fast. Oh, leopard eagle. I thought it was a leopard seagull. That was what Rosic oh, said. That's a better crossover. <laughs> I was like, how fast is this? <laughs> it's, it's like those goats in um, in Love and Thunder. <laughs> everywhere. No, a leopard eagle. Uh, they're okay. one of the fastest creatures on Earth. Both in land and, you said and air. But you said that it's not quite as reliable as Rue. Uh, no, I said it would be uh, easier to get than a dragon. 
which I stand by that statement still. It's probably true. Uh, yeah, it's probably. I can... Okay. How many of us could it carry at once? Three. Mm-hmm. So if we were to lose our dragon and we had to rely on the Leopard Eagle, we wouldn't be able to make it. Just two trips Wait, every time. It can, claw, it can carry us in its claws. Sure, of course it could. There are five. Easy. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Maybe we go for the dragon. <laughs> Can we meet this thing first? It's in Omashu. Yeah. If Rue doesn't get along with this thing, that's going to be a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. Yugo might make. Or not sorry. The dragon might make us a bigger target. Might actually be a liability. Be pretty cool though. I didn't really want to, like, it would be pretty cool. And also, I didn't really want to have the dragon. I just wanted to talk to him. Mm -hmm. I feel like our conversation was cut short when I was talking to him before. So we we can leave it for later. Let's hear. And he, like, writes a note basically saying, like, uh, these are uh, contract workers for the White Lotus. uh, And if they require your leopard eagle to to give it to them. One more thing. Since dragons are being hunted, how how endangered are these dragons that are being birthed there? No, I mean... In the Natachi. If we, you know about it, I mean, it's pretty known that that's one of the breeding grounds for dragons. Fire Nation's probably already there. Okay. Just ask How'd they kill baby dragons? I don't the point is to face, the, the, you know, one of the original firebenders, it's not an infant, to earn the title of dragon. People do weird things with power. You don't have to tell me. There would certainly be unscrupulous individuals who would kill a baby dragon and then just boast that they killed a dragon and leave out the baby part. Pathetic. Pangoli... Where was Iron last seen? The last place that we have any report of Iron was in Ankela, which I'm sure you all know is the capital of the Northern Water Tribe. I don't know what he was doing there, but um, he was missing. Uh, we, we found him again once Kanu had told us about it. Tried to track him down, couldn't find any trace of him. And just recently, we had some reports of him showing up in the Northern Water Tribe. So, well, gotta go to the North Pole. Bring a jacket. Wait, 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 wait. You said he has some lion turtles? Do you know what else he has? Uh, a lion turtle? Um, a tenacious desire to unstabilize the world. Yeah, we kind of already knew that. An earthbending. And he's a very, very powerful earthbender. I mean, I did teach him everything I know. What exactly do you know? It might help us. He, like, rolls his shoulders a little bit and, like, reaches out. And the entire ground starts to shake. And instead of, like, the whole ground lifting up, like, all these little rocks start lifting up. And then he just thrusts them. And you see them all, like collide against the back wall with incredible force Uh, to the point where like a bunch of smoke starts to appear and like then it settles and you can see that like thousands of these little rock bullets are now embedded in the back wall still not lava bending shame that was incredibly impressive Mm mm-hmm uh, yeah. Do you have any shields? Yeah, I was just going to ask if you can point us towards the... Well, I think we've got some shields, yes. So where where can we find the quartermaster? Uh, Rioshan is the quartermaster. Okay. Oh, good. I think you've already met her. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, um, you, the uh, ex Kyoshi warrior. Uh, yes. Uh, I, our informants have told us that you know a little bit about chi blocking, yes? That's true. You should speak to Ryoshin. Okay. All right, uh, I'm going to 
continue the dishes. Turns back, starts scrubbing and like humming to himself. All right, bye. Thanks. Before they, as they leave, Rose is going to say, hey guys, I'll, I'll catch up with you. I just want to ask um, Penguin Ole one last thing. I'm sorry, who? Uh, p- p- Pangole. <laughs> <laughs> Rose like runs back to Pangole. He goes, I, what? Hello, I'm trying to sir. do the dishes. Yeah, so, so, what? What? Here, let me help. And then Rose like just starts like frantically like drying dirty dishes as he <laughs> looks at Pangole. He goes, um, so y- you have a massive library, right? Um, yes. Are there like a lot of scrolls there? There are hundreds of scrolls there. Okay. You you wouldn't this doesn't look familiar to you at all, right? And Rose like takes his like sopping wet hands and pulls out the um invaluable firebending scroll and unrolls it. Uh look, uh it looks like one of those uh royal firebending scrolls, yes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I don't have a ton of those in the mm. library, and I think the people that only carry them are people like Princess Zeisen, so perhaps you yeah. should ask her about it. I already did. Seem disappointed. Oh, very much so. Yeah, I wanted her to teach me and, like, to train me more so. And she basically said, no, not until you find the scroll. Well, maybe the training comes on the journey to the training. <sighs> is that is that like a is that like a parable or are you being literal? I never knew. With, I never know with the old people. It's a metaphor or something. Maybe it's both. All right. Well. Okay. Thank you, sir. And he was like, just leaves, and there's just a stack of like dirty, quote unquote, dried dishes that he made, and he just leaves. And you just hear, oh, "There's more now. How did that?" <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking deeply to my soul right now. <laughs> uh, and eventually, uh. the five of you find Ryoshan. She is uh, standing by uh, a, a building that's got a bunch of, you can see on the outside, there's a bunch of like, like weapon racks and armor mannequins. She just starts grabbing stuff. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, you uh, how, um, you cannot. What? I what? I am the quartermaster. I've yeah. got a. What, what do you need? I will give you what you need. You can't just grab. You can't just grab oh. whatever you want. I need a pauldron. <laughs> okay. It's on right. my on my bad shoulder. Okay. It's not uh, really bad. It's just it it doesn't. It's not, the arm's not complete. That's, um, it's a cool shoulder. It is very. That is fair. Can I take a look at that? That's very interesting. Sure. So Liko puts out her her arm. Bamboo and metal. Uh, I think so. Yeah. That is. Have you never seen anything like it? No. This is. Who made this? A bad guy. Okay. Um, cool. Get it. You don't want to talk about it. Uh, well, I'm sure there'd be uh, tons of White Lotus agents who would be interested in looking at that, but only obviously you're, uh, you know, you'd have to consent. Obviously, we don't want to just take it from you. She just starts grabbing okay, more stuff. Okay, again, oh. I told you, please just tell me what you need. I, I you're you're taking too long. I, I, I'm, okay. All I right. All right. Do. You're next. One pauldron. What do you need? I need, and he just starts listing off like rations. I need blankets. I need tents. And, and he just starts just going okay. for like, she's writing it all down. She's like, okay. And then I need like, f- f- uh, like 5,000 jade pieces. That'd oh, be great. That's a lot of money. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. Uh, it's going to take me a moment to get all that stuff. I'm going to have to go talk to the treasurer and We'll, we'll get it for you. Any anything else? Yeah. Um. Can I get a glove that would custom fit this hand of mine so that it's not quite so obvious that I don't really have an arm? I think I could get something like that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. 
Uh, is there anything special about the arm that I need to be aware of? For It's just made of bamboo and metal, and I don't know how long the metal will last before it rusts up. I can fix it, Liko. Yeah, because I, I don't know what this is. Yeah, but, um, my dad isn't isn't that impressive of an engineer. I can I can figure it out. Um, okay. Could I could I get uh, a pair of tonfa and um two two sets of dark gray clothes and um. I feel awkward asking this. Uh, do you have any, uh, a any a do you, do you have any, do you have any gliders? Um, I, I can make one. Yeah. I can have it, made. It, I mean, it really, it doesn't need to, um, it doesn't need to be a functional glider. You can make a, you can make a bow staff that is just shaped like a glider in similar but weight um wait why don't you want it to work oh i i can't bend anymore but uh but i know how to use it as a weapon and i'm comfortable with it so yes i um i can get you that bow staff um and if ever you want to train perhaps we can discover your air bending again i don't know Okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Ren, Rosa, do. You- I'll be taking one of these. <laughs> <laughs> and Ren, without again permission, goes to grab a circular shield. Okay, I'll just put it put it down. I'm gonna. That's not to grab. I'm gonna make a note and go and grab a shield for you. These are the display mm-hmm. weapons. Yes. They're actually made of styrofoam. Ren, <laughs> Ren stops partway through, strapping it on his back and begrudgingly puts it back down. <laughs> styrofoam shield to him, not even realizing. Like, this, the weight is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> she's like juggling three sabers. And he's like, oh, they're not real. No, okay, that's why I, I told worried. you to stop picking them up. I don't know what I need. Do you have any cool hats? Uh, I can sure. Yeah, I can um get a hat for you. I don't know, guys. I feel like I'm, ugh, I basically make weapons with my fire bending. Maybe armor would be good. I don't know. M- maybe armor or like yes, yes armor. Um, it's up to you, man. Yes, you have to order it. Uh, could you put in an order for a cool hat? And equally cool armor. All right. Yes. Cool hat. Cool armor. Got it. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. I'm. Well, we're. we're I, I almost forgot. We're also going to need like two, three hundred pounds of feed. We have a dragon. An otter. Okay. Dragon. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you think we can get a new saddle? Oh yeah. The. Yeah. It's starting to wear, particularly in the middle. I think we have right now. We have like what, like five. Like, what are the firebenders ride again? I forgot what they're called. But we have five of those basically strung together on Rue right now. And I feel like that's yeah. not a very lasting. It seems like it'd be un- uncomfortable for the dragon otter. Uh, yes, we can get you a, a, a saddle for the five of you to sit in. Sure. Absolutely. Okay, nice. I'm going to go fulfill this order. That'd be great. Right. Thank you. Bye. Oh, wait, if you can get. <laughs> do, do we need to leave? <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go in the back. Wait, real Sean, if you can get the letters cool. P P, um, uh, on the cool hat. Okay. Why? He whispers to Jay, "Pinchy prods," because it worked. You should absolutely do that. Man. Okay. <laughs> yep. No, nope, for sure. I'm with you. That's what people are going to know. Yeah. That mean what it means. Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to ask why you want those letters on your hat, but I suppose uh Pangole did say get you whatever you need it. So all right. Uh okay, I'm going to go fill this order. Um I'll probably have everything ready by tomorrow. Okay. All right. Cool. Perfect. 
We just kind of awkwardly look at each other like, yep. mm, okay, <laughs> mm, bye. <laughs> you you so can go now. now. Oh, oh, oh we, yeah, should, we should go now. now. Okay. Just, <laughs> just in case you needed us. For some reason, Che really hates leaving when people tell him to. <laughs> the rest of us are filtering out, and Shay's just standing <laughs> cross armed, staring at her. <laughs> I want my stuff. <laughs> Give me my stuff. I have it all. I have to find it. <laughs> no, it's fine. Can we go gonna, back to oh, the. Oh, yeah. oh. Justin, I'm going to say Sorry, that no. uh, Ren covertly passed a note. Now, to whoever you think should be relevant, it could be. This person, whatever their name was, or it could be Pangole, whoever could handle a discreet request for a poisonous item. Um, <laughs> why don't you roll to push your luck? I feel okay. Like, I feel like it to Ryoshan is better. I feel yep. like if Pangole yep. got a note from Ren, he'd be like, oh, poison! <laughs> Yeah. And I'm just the like, king no, of discretion <laughs> just opens it right in front of everybody. Like, oh, poison! <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. okay. <laughs> I won't say another word. <laughs> it's a big conspicuous right, wink. Luck. Oh, 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 okay. Twelve. My luck has been pushed. The cost is that Osa sees you pass this note to Ryoshan. Um, the extra opportunity that falls in your lap is uh, that um, you slide this note to Ryoshin very smoothly. No one else sees it except for Osa. Uh, and Ryoshin is enough of a, a covert agent that just takes it. And uh, she's maybe like still awkwardly trying to get you to leave. She goes, um... Wait a second. Um, you, you, something about the way you move. Do you, do you know the basics of chi blocking? Oh, I was uh, going to ask you about that. Uh, yeah, I learned some of it. It's not good yet. Show me. The rest of you, leave. I still want my stuff. I will get you your stuff. It's not going to be here till tomorrow. I have to find it. The longer you stand here and watch me, the longer it will take me to find it. Does that make Ren, sense? Fine. Ren starts fine, to fine, take fine, a chi fine. blocking stance from one of the forms <laughs> and waits for everyone else to dip out. And as soon as they're gone, Ren just turns back to, to Ryoshan. Did you actually want me to do the forms? Or yes. did you just want to ask about the note? No, the forms first. I can ask you about the note in a second. Forms. Okay. Ren starts... Moving around like a bunch of spaghetti noodles. He's like, wait, that's what I turn people into. Never mind. And then switches very quickly to try to remember what Zishan taught. Makes a bunch of sharp, uh, quick jab motions. Who taught you? Zishan? Uh, I see. Yes. I see her in that. Sloppy work. Absolutely sloppy. Um, really? I tried. Yes, yes. I told her time and time again what to work on, and it seems as though she has not listened. Instead, she has passed it on to somebody else. Ren looks a little defeated. It's fine. It's not terrible. You've got the basics down, for sure. Thankfully, you have the honor of speaking to the premier chi blocker in, I think, the world, actually, at this point. Definitely one of them. Um taught dozens of people how to cheat block i'm very grateful ren says through gritted teeth <laughs> am i detecting some sarcasm i don't if you don't want to learn i i don't have really the time to teach someone who doesn't want to learn no i want to learn and you just seem very self-important i know myself very well i know what i'm good at i know what i'm not good at and i don't think it helps your chi to deny what you're good at so i'm very honest with people about what i can do and what i can't do there's a certain detachment in that fine i believe you and yes i need to learn i'm happy to teach you 
Why did you learn chi blocking? Because I can't bend. But maybe I can stop others from bending if if it came down to it. If my friends needed that. Is it just aggression for you? Protection is more like it. She's like eyeing you up and down. What do you do with chi blocking? There are some people who, by the gifts of the spirits, have been given the ability to perform superhuman feats of strength, magic, whatever you want to call it. And there's a subsection of those people who choose to use that power to oppress and hurt those who can't perform these feats. Yeah, I know. I think we've met one or two. Why? It is the duty of every chi blocker to remind those in power that we are all human. Then I'm right for this. We'll see. Do you think you can get me that? And Ren gestures at the note. She unfolds it, looks at it for a moment. Yeah, I think I could find something. I hope I don't have to use it. I hope you don't either. Run departs. You're all shown to places that you can rest here in the White Lotus headquarters to wait for your uh, requisitions order to come through. And uh, you bed for the night. And we will see what tomorrow brings next episode. Hopefully we can get into some actione. Mm-hmm. Well, um, Steve, any words for our listeners? I do have some words. Yeah, if you uh, if you love this show and uh, you want to help us keep making it better, gasp, um, consider throwing a few bucks our way. Uh, you can become an Ember Island player or a Pro Bender or a White Lotus member by clicking on the link in the show notes. Um, and to be an Ember Island player, it's it's just five dollars. So that's that's literally the cost of rubber jar grippers. <laughs> You know, if you think about it, which I'm I, sure you did. I am thinking about it now. I wasn't, but now yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about rubber jar grippers. But yeah, I mean, you know, those are super handy when you need that extra assistance opening all those hard to open jars. But if you don't need more of those, instead, you could help the Flying Bison podcast and you'd know that you're helping the show. So, so Steve, for those people that like just use like a towel, like just like donate to us, right? Like be an Ember Island player. That's right. You don't need the, the you don't need the, the perfect candidate <laughs> to help us because you're covered. You're you know, covered. you, you don't it. need those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, you have I'll the grip strength to be an Ember Island. I'll tell player. you what. We should add. We should add a perk uh, to the Ember Island players. If you join us, uh, I'll come to your house and I'll open all your jars for you. <laughs> Ooh, Justin will be the rubber jar gripper. I will be the rubber jar gripper. <laughs> That's good. But hey, uh, if that's not <laughs> something you can do right now, whether because of grip strength or some other reason, uh, we would love a review on the podcatcher of your choice or a rating. And that helps us a ton with spreading the word about the show. So thank you. Thank you. Well, this is the Flying Bison Podcast, and we hope you enjoyed exploring the Four Nations with us. See you next week. Bye. 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 See you. Avatar Legends was developed and produced by Magpie Games. The worlds of Avatar The Last Airbender and Avatar The Legend of Korra are property of Viacom CBS. Intro music is Dizu by Sendai. Outro music is Tokyo Funk by LATG Music. Logo and art by Kate and Matthew Menke. You can find more of their work at pomakin.com. Link in the show notes.